In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Maria Goretti was born in 1890, one of six children from a poor farming family in Coronaldo, Italy. In 1899 her father, Luigi Goretti, changed positions in the family to La Ferriere di Conca, 40 miles from Rome, to work as a sharecropper. In trade for farming work, the Gorettis lived in the landowner's evacuated factory on the property. They shared their residence with another poor family, the Serenellis, which consisted of Giovanni, a widower, and his son, Alessandro. The Serenellis lived upstairs, while the Gorettis lived downstairs. Anything above their crop allotment, the families could keep for their wants. In this way, they endured poverty and hunger, working side by side. The farmland was poor, swampy, mosquito-infested, and impossible to work. One day, Maria's father was bitten by a mosquito, carrying the malaria virus. Tragically, he died 11 days later in 1900. Maria was just nine years old, for the Goretti family to live, and Maria's mother, Assunta, took her husband's place in the fields. This left Maria, as the eldest girl, to take her mother's place in the home. Maria cooked, cleaned, did the laundry, and cared for her younger siblings. Besides, she cooked and cleaned for the two men. Maria never complained about the extra work she had to do, she was a source of encouragement to her mother's fear, convincing her mother that Jesus would provide for their needs, Maria was a pious child. Although she could neither read nor write, she learned her catechism and received her first Holy Communion, with great reverence, in 1901 on the Feast of Corpus Christi. She went to Mass as often as possible and grew in virtue, sanctity, maturity, and beauty. Alessandro, the young man with whom her family shared a neighboring residence, was a tough youth with a poor religious upbringing. His mother died in a psychiatric hospital when he was a baby, and his father was a drunkard. Alessandro himself was given to drinking, swearing, and insensitive behavior. He had impure emotions toward Maria, and when he would find her alone in the kitchen, which the two families shared, he would speak to her crudely and make sexual advances. Maria, in her great love for God, disliked his behavior, reprimanded his evil suggestions, and told him, No, never, that is a sin. God forbids that, and we would go to hell. On July 5, 1902, Alessandro's evil intentions came to a head. Maria was inside the house, working on the sewing and caring for the younger children while everyone else was out threshing in the fields. Seizing an opportunity for evil, Alessandro left his work, came up the steps and into the kitchen, and closed the door behind him. He approached Maria with a file used to sharpen farm tools, the end of which he had sharpened to a point. He told Maria that if she did not finally allow him to have sex with her, he would kill her. Maria, now a strong child rooted in her love for Jesus, refused. She cried, No. It is a sin. God does not want it. As he moved to overtake her, Maria fought him off bravely. She told him she would rather die than allow him to do what he wanted to do to her. In a rage, Alessandro stabbed Maria nine times. The file passed through Maria's tiny body from the front through her back, again and again. Alessandro was twenty years old, and Maria was eleven. After the attack, Maria lost consciousness. Alessandro, thinking he had killed her, went into his room and shut the door. However, Maria soon regained consciousness and managed to crawl over to the door and open the latch in order to cry out for help. Alessandro, hearing the creak of the latch, came back and stabbed her five more times. He attacked her with such force that the file bent when it hit her spine. Maria was found by Giovanni, Alessandro's father, in a pool of blood. Miraculously, Maria was still alive and conscious. When her mother asked her who had done this to her, Maria was able to identify Alessandro as her attacker. 
She was then rushed to the hospital while Alessandro was taken off to jail. She was badly dehydrated due to a massive loss of blood. Dehydrated, she pleaded again and again for water. Because her intestines were pierced and its poisonous content was seeping into her body, the doctors couldn't give her any water, as this would exacerbate her already life-threatening condition. A parish priest was called to give Maria her last rites, before a risky operation was begun to save her life. The priest showed Maria a crucifix and told her that Jesus was also very thirsty as he suffered his torture on the cross, he asked Maria if she would offer up her thirst to Jesus for the salvation of sinners. Maria agreed and didn't ask for water again. The doctors began their surgery on each of Maria's 14 wounds. Because she was so weak, they couldn't use any anesthesia. Maria was fully conscious as they enlarged each of her wounds to sew them up from the inside out. She didn't cry out in pain once. She withstood her agony in peaceful and perfect patience, offering it all up to Jesus. Despite the efforts of the doctors, they couldn't control Maria's bleeding. After 20 excruciating hours of suffering, Maria died the next day on July 6 at the age of 11 years and 8 months. In her last moments, the priest asked Maria to forgive her attacker. Her last words were, I forgive Alessandro Serenelli, and I want him with me in heaven forever. A week after Maria died, Asunta, with destitution now added to her poverty, no longer had any means to help her remaining five children while also raising them. She had to give each of them up for adoption. Alessandro, when he was brought before the judge, pleaded innocence. He claimed that he was protecting himself against Maria attacking him. Of course, the judge knew Alessandro was lying, and, as he was a minor, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison instead of a life sentence. Alessandro's terrible behavior continued in prison. Because he was an angry young man in steady fights, he was placed in solitary confinement. He was completely remorseless for his crime and his heart was hardened. Six years later, Maria appeared to Alessandro in a dream while he was in prison. She gave him fourteen white lilies, the symbol of purity, without speaking a word, one flower for each time he stabbed her. Alessandro knew this to mean that Maria had pardoned him for his crime and that she was now with God in heaven. As a result of this dream, his heart was miraculously converted. He called for the bishop, confessed his crime, and lived out the rest of his sentence as a reformed man and model prisoner. He was let out of prison three years early due to his good behavior. Maria had become his special patron and intercessor. After Alessandro was released from prison, now 27 years after the attack, he went right away to see Asunta, Maria's mother. It was Christmas Eve. He knocked on her door and asked her if she knew who he was. She did recognize him as Alessandro Serenelli, the man who killed his daughter and destroyed her family. Alessandro asked Asunta for her forgiveness for what he had done to her. Asunta replied, If Maria forgives you, and God forgives you, how can I not also forgive you? The two went together to midnight mass and received Holy Communion kneeling side by side. Alessandro also publicly confessed his sin before the congregation and asked for their pardon as well. Asunta then adopted Alessandro as her son. After obtaining Asunta's forgiveness, Alessandro went to live at a Franciscan monastery as a lay brother. He did odd jobs and helped the monastery as a porter and gardener. He also helped with the Franciscan-run school and was so gentle with the children that they called him uncle. He was known for living a quiet, peaceful, and holy life. The cause for Maria's canonization opened in 1935, with Alessandro himself, her murderer, testifying to her sanctity and heavenly intercession on his behalf. Maria was then beatified in 1947. Asunta, a woman so destitute during her life, was now very rich. She remarks about her daughter's beatification, When I saw the Pope coming, I prayed, Madonna, please help me. 
He put his hand on my head and said, Blessed Mother, Happy Mother, Mother of a Blessed. For more Catholic content and spiritual growth, subscribe to our channel. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.